Hello my dear friends, you are on the Military Summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 3rd of May of 2024. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. And first we are going to talk about Kherson direction. We continue receiving significant number of updates from the islands between the Russian bank of the river and the Ukraine bank of the river. The Russians continue pummeling and reducing to ruins the towns and the settlements by the name of Vilintiansky and of course the towns by the name of Safiyevka, Novodmitrievka. Uh, so, as you can see, the Russians are, let's say, pressing this area. Kizomis is also under very heavy fire. And this is very important, because if you remember, we discussed this in the previous updates, that the head of Ukraine army, Sirsky, stated a few days ago that the Ukrainians managed to seize control over the village by the name of Nistriga. This one, we have adjusted the map based on that. And now we see, based on the geolocations and videos receiving from the area, that the Russians took the situation seriously. It's not something that we used to see in Krynke when uh, just in a month or in a two after the creation of the foothold by the Ukrainians, the Russians they say, confirmed this information and started doing something. Now we see that the Russians completely agreed that the situation is not uh, so simple and so easy and the Russians are trying to prevent any attacks from the Ukrainian side on this direction. So this is the configuration of strikes. As you can see, the Russians are very concentrated. Um, most likely the Russians are bombing the territory just by, let's say, based on this simple logic big buildings should be destroyed because big buildings means let's say concentration of forces and of course the russians also always attack something that they managed to discover so we'll see this situation but most likely as we discussed in the previous updates the ukrainians are preparing themselves before further offensive operation with the purpose first to capture these islands between uh, the rivers and after that to land their infantry in the towns and the villages like Vinogradne, Rybalche, Zabarne, uh, Stara Zburovka and Novosburovka. Of course you might say uh, you may uh, say that uh, Ukrainians have no chances to complete this mission successfully because uh, we remembered what uh, how the story in Krynke ended but I would like to remind you that currently most of the sources most of the experts are talking about possible Russian offensive operation in Kharkiv. Kharkiv offensive operation was uh, the biggest problem of Kharkiv offensive operation is that too many attention, too much attention, too much of everything, too many wars were already invested in this operation. Now everybody is talking about Kharkiv and of course the, let's say if the Russians are defeated in Kharkiv offensive, then this is going to be, would be significant the media damage and to Russian reputation. So now based on the reports and talks we receive from Kharkiv, the Russians don't have chances, don't have, let's say, right, the right to lose this battle because most of the people expect that the Russians are going to win so this is going to be complete disaster with expectations if something goes wrong it's just like let's say global opinion about the situation so that's why the Russians most likely during the uh, Kharkiv offensive will try to use as many as possible resources they have and furthermore most likely the Russians would redeploy additional resources from every single direction to Kharkiv just with one purpose to win this battle to win without any uh, plan b or plan c or whatever just plan a so that's why the ukrainians understand that very likely the russians would redeploy some artillery systems some i don't know forces from this direction and as soon as the russians do this they will launch their let's say uh, marine operation and uh, they will try to do this because just in this case the forces will have almost the same let's say power 50 50. Furthermore, we continue receiving updates from Krynki itself. We see significant Ukrainian FPV drone strikes number and we can start continue receiving more and more videos of how the Ukrainians try to land their infantry in the area and the Ukrainians are doing this. So the Ukrainians continue sending the forces. You know that most of the mappers haven't updated their maps uh, showing considering this territory uh, Kazachi Lahiri, Krynki and uh, let's say Karsunka and more towns under Russian control. But uh, even this video confirms that Ukrainians managed to land their infantry we don't know for sure what was the destiny of those soldiers maybe they were fpv drawn by the russians or maybe they managed to say improve their positions or to evacuate back or maybe the video is old of let's say october of 2023 or something like this but the question is that the ukrainians continue uh, doing something and if we increase the numbers of days since the beginning of april we might see that the ukrainians established complete superiority along kazachi lahiri krynki karsunka uh, towns with 
FPV drones and the problem is that the Russians are not using FPV drones at all. So when talking about the Russians, the only way they try to counter offensive the Ukrainians using Lemur missiles, guided bombs, uh, let's say an artillery, but not FPV drones. And this is the big question why the Russians are not using drones as the Ukrainians do. This is the question I don't have answer on. And uh, f but today, when talking about today, the Russians for the first time since the probably for the previous uh, let's say six months published the video of how the Russian drone managed to cross Dnipro River, and then the Russians start FPV droning the Ukrainians on that bank, and the Ukrainians wasn't even ready. So the video, the main idea of the video, that the Ukrainians uh, weren't ready to face the Russian FPV droning on the direction. So very complicated and interesting situation along Dnipro River, but most likely the. This summer is going to be also the battle for Dnipro, not just for Kharkiv. Now we're moving further to Velika Novoselovka, where the Russian soldiers and Russian forces continue offensive operation. And as a result of clashes during the previous 24 hours, according to different mappers, the Russians seize control over the uh, say southern farms, and the farms are, con are being controlled by the Russians for more than 60-70%. Ukrainians control just a few buildings in the northern part in the vicinity of the residential area. Furthermore, the Russians are not going to stop. They continue pummeling and bombing the, the towns and the streets of Orozhaina, and they are clearing the area before further attempts to attack. So we'll see what is going to be next, but uh, the important the Russians are not going to stop. Now we are moving to uh, Nova Mikhailovka, Konstantinovka area. We got lots of updates, and according to information we have, the Russians conducted or started, began another wave of offensive operation, and now the Russians are moving to Konstantinovka using two roads, the southern and the northern. So the Russians are moving to Konstantinovka along this line, uh, along these two lines, like this uh, road to attack, and the second road to attack lays a little bit uh, to the north, uh, let's say in the vicinity of Paras and we also have the video confirming this. And the most important thing that uh, a very interesting updates, maybe you're familiar, maybe you follow the reports and the official Telegram channel of 79, Sarah Salt Brigade, and uh, this is the funniest uh, story ever I've seen uh, since the beginning of the special military operation. After the 79th Brigade was completely defeated in Nova Mikhailovka, and they assessed fall back towards Paraskovyevka, and now they try to hold this area, let's say, under the Russian pressure. Uh, we had some reports in the past that the Ukrainians have already abandoned the town, but without any geolocations. But the thing is that the 79th Brigade, during the previous two weeks, uh, on their official Telegram channels, channel were posting just one thing about difficult situation on the ground about complete uh, absence of any supply support no reinforcements no reserves no artillery rounds no fpv drones no tanks no let's say mechanized forces nothing just the soldiers like they they might be like an opinion could you can uh, one can say that uh, you see the brigade that uh, was fighting with the russians with stones with basic stones and i don't know what what else and water with stones and water and that's it and uh, today the russians conducted offensive operation and the first reports we also received from that 79th brigade and they stated that the russians began offensive and the main russian goal was not to enter konstantinovka or paraskovka the russians were trying to bypass both towns and to establish physical control over the road of 524 so that was the main russian plan to cut the roads from the north and from the south and the purpose is not just to encircle konstantinovka or paraskovka the sources report that first the main let's say at goal of this attack to establish control of 524 road is to cut Ugledar from supply and to let's say to to start the beginning of this operation and also the forces of 79th brigade that's official telegram channel stated that during that post about the russian attacks that he stated that somehow the russians managed to find out that the situation 79th brigade is very difficult that there is no supply and support and now the russians decided to use the situation and they start offensive and i have a question so for, for the previous two weeks uh, you were posting significant number of updates that you have a very difficult situation and today you're posting information that somehow the Russians managed to figure this out. So it's maybe you need to watch your, your full own channel and to clear the channel or not to publish updates that can give the Russians additional information. So it was very weird to see those posts, but this is the current situation on Novomikhailovka-Konstantinovka.
Now we are moving to Krasnogorovka, where the Russians also continue their offensive operation, but uh, the Russians, as I understand, were a little bit uh, stopped and slowed down by the Ukrainians in the south of Krasnogorovka. Uh, currently, we see uh, during the previous few days, we, or during the previous, we, we stopped receiving any updates about additional Russian progress, which confirms that Ukrainians managed to, let's say, bring critical mass, and now with mass of soldiers, they can, let's say, slow down the Russians. But now we see also that the, either the Russians change their plans, change their tactics, and now the Russians are completely focused on the fields between Georgievka, Krasnogorovka, and Marinka. The Russians are pummeling this area heavily with artillery, counter-artillery duels. The Russians try to get ammo depots, so let's say Ukraine mortar positions, anti-tank positions. So most likely, even before the fall of Krasnogorovka, the Russians will try to collapse and to establish complete control over the fields between Georgievka, Marinka, and Krasnogorovka. So this this territory is the primary target for the Russians for the next probably two weeks and uh, that's it and after that so they're going to be more let's say uh, different uh, things more approaches the Russians can use uh, how to say is control over Krasnogorovka. Now we're moving further to the north in direction of uh, the Karlovka water reserver. Today we got additional video of complete fire control over the main supply road that Ukrainians used to hold their positions in Yasnabrodovka and Nitailova. So this area is the only way how the Ukrainians can send additional reinforcement. And we see that this territory is under complete Russian artillery control. During the previous weeks, during the previous months, since the beginning of April, we got significant number of updates and details how the Russians managed to destroy a lot of Ukrainian positions, a lot of vehicles that were trying to cross this area, let's say in the in direction of Nitailova. So no chances for the Ukrainians to use this area as the main supply road, which also is a very bad situation. Now we are moving to Achiritz in the direction we continue receiving significant number of updates. But I would like to discuss with and to share with you one important information, maybe even funny information. Uh, that uh, you may, uh, let's say, know as well. You know, that there are a lot of, uh, let's say, sources as military summary who try to geolocate things, who try to um, use his own map and many, many other things. And currently there are two camps in this, in this field. Uh, there are, let's say, not like two camps, but mainly two policies, yes? And the, what I'm talking about policies is the policy how to adjust the map and how to change the color of uh, the let's say above this or that town so one uh, policy is to change the territories based on the geolocations right if you receive geolocation that means that there is a russian or ukrainian control and the second policy is to change the color of the territory based on the sources and rumors on the ground so of course completely two different situations on military summer we try to keep two stories we try to show people either uh, the story of geolocations control or geolocations allocated control and let's say let's call it sources on the ground control but today there was a very heavy clashes let's call it like this and fightings between uh, different Russian sources uh, who build their stories on what, what using one way and who build these stories using another way and the thing is that today the Ukrainian sources published another video of how they were bombing the Russian positions in Achiretina and uh, they uh, the Russian very reliable centers, very reliable, let's say, uh, sources managed to geolocate some strikes and one of the explosions took place here. And after that, the post was published with the description that uh, the Russian, the Ukrainians were bombing the edge Russian positions in Achiretina. And this situation led to the conflict because with other, let's say, uh, geolocators, mappers who are already capturing Arhangelsk and who is already maybe even storming Harvik, Kharkiv and Kiev, uh, based on the rumors and talks on the ground. So, and based on that, there was a very heavy, big conflict. And uh, this, the, and that would, what I'm trying to tell you, I would like to tell you that uh, it's uh, correct to follow both stories. To correct to follow the stories based on the sources and the rumors on the ground, because very likely that there is a, there, is, there are some there is a truth in these stories, and of course it's important to follow the changes on map based on the geolocations we receive. It's also very important, but you need to keep two stories in your mind, because if you follow just according to rumors, sometimes uh, this information that provided by the rumors and the sources on the ground 
is not correct, even if this information was provided by the pro-Ukrainian mappers like Deep State. I'm not saying that, once again, we'll discuss this topic. They have a contract with the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, so that's why this, let's say, just based on that, it's not a reliable resource. But anyway, regarding even these things, it's better to keep two stories in your minds and not to fight with each other because some people are saying that there is control just over part of Chiretina, others are saying that the Russians are storming Kiev and Lvov already based on the rumors on the ground. Maybe the Russians are doing this, but uh, it's better just to discuss this and that's it. And maybe to adjust the map or at least to color the area as a gray zone. Anyway, regarding the updates, once again, the Russians, according to sources on the ground and Tsarhangelska itself, have already almost established complete control over the village. The sources reported that Ukrainians uh, leave the settlement and start moving further to the north. Also, based on rumors without any geolocations and videos. Pro Ukrainians are saying that the Russians captured the gardens. And uh, so, this is the current situation. Once again, this uh, gray zone has haven't been confirmed by any geolocation. But from the other side, we see lots of geolocations that were published by the Ukrainians, as you can see on the line between Achiretsno, Novo, Bakhmutov, and Slavyova. We will not turn on these videos because there are lots of casualties among Russian soldiers and Russian armored vehicles. If we increase the numbers of dates, even since the beginning of the months of May, we see significant Ukrainian superiority with FPV, and most of these strikes were made by the forces of 40, by the 47 mechanized brigade of course and we can see the same story by the way in Krynki. so we see the Ukrainian concentration and we also don't see Ukrainian strikes somewhere in Keramik where according to sources the Russians have already established complete control so very complicated but anyway the Ukrainians are attacking this territory currently we don't know for sure what the Ukrainians are doing maybe they try to destroy the Russian forces and not to allow them to concentrate for further offensive or maybe the Ukrainians do have some plans to counter attack in Slavyovo of Bakhmutovka by some squads and some brigades with the purpose to restore control over Achiretina or maybe even to encircle the Russians. Currently, we don't know for sure, but obviously the thing that we can note and would like to point your attention, let's say about two uh, massive, two or let's say in in intensified activity from the Ukrainian side. Now we are moving further to Chasavyar direction, where we also got significant number of updates. Uh, another important thing, that's just to uh, why the conflict, another reason of the conflict, and that's it, we will move further, is the gap. The gap. You know that uh, there is always on every single front line a differences between the one, let's say, uh, policy and another policy. But for example, when talking about Chasavyar and when talking about different mappers, the policy, the differences between, let's say, updating map according to the policies is just this forest. Stupki Golubkovsky. The geolocations are saying that the Russians are not there, that maybe this is the gray zone. But the mappers are saying that based on the source on the ground, this forest was captured. So, and this is the only difference between pro Ukraine, pro, let's say, geolocated approach and pro rumors approach right when talking about Urajaina itself Urajaina we just bypassed this area the same story according to uh, geolocations the Russians just control these farms and according to sources on the ground also some far farms to the west so the gap is not so big but when talking about the Chiretina the gap currently is very big the gap uh, the difference between these two approaches even more than the Russian control, geolocated control. And this is already a critical gap. This is the critical gap that tell us, first of all, that there might be some maybe disinformation about some, uh, let's say, progress on the ground. So we just need to be very, very careful with updates that currently we are receiving from a Chiretina direction, because something, something interesting obviously is happening there. May, but maybe from the other side, when you're gonna see this video, let's say even this evening, the, uh, the Russians will publish the flags from Arkhangelska, Chiretina, and many, many other towns and the settlements in the area. Most likely, this might happen. Okay, now we're moving to uh, returning back to Chesavyar. As we can see, the Russians are bombing this territory heavily, and today we got a very interesting statement that during the previous night the Russians made the first attempts to answer the eastern chest of Yar and that there were, was, were very heavy clashes and died over the area and the thing is that according to the sources the Ukrainians redeployed to the eastern chest of Yar the Kraken special forces so it's one of the most uh, trained well experienced most one of the most aggressive let's say special forces of the armed forces of Ukraine and the sources also reported that the Russians as well redeployed in, uh, in uh, eastern part of Chesavyar 
said we are some special forces the russians didn't tell us the exact squad who was redeployed but the thing is that there was the clashes between the most uh, powerful and the most experienced the most well equipped forces either from the russian from ukrainian side for now we don't have that say the results of those clashes how that uh, let's say battle in the eastern uh um, ended maybe the russians managed to improve their positions we will see this up we'll see during the next few days or maybe the ukrainians managed to report the russian attacks on this video we can see how the russians destroyed another pontoon bridge over severski Donetsk donbass canal which also reduced the Ukraine possibilities in the eastern chasavyar very interesting details are coming from the fields between ivanovsk and klishevka today this evening we haven't managed to add the video on map we will discuss this in the morning but because we don't have enough of uh, let's say geolocations and updates we need probably a bit of better picture uh, the russians continue their offensive uh, let's say along the fields and today we got geolocations almost from the area of uh, this uh, rich network of fortifications so some russian armored vehicles were damaged and destroyed somewhere among these fields so the clashes for these let's say fortifications the russians began today and uh, during the next few days uh, this territory might be captured by the russians so let's let's wait very interesting i see which direction we haven't received almost anything from the area just the updates of how the russians were bombing verkhnikamyanska with salt and tower system and i'll remind you once again that the russians are about to start the use using of the salt and tower system number three uh, model three with the title dragon this is going to be the most powerful weapon in the special military operation ground weapon with a distance of 15 kilometers nothing can stand under the pressure of this flamethrower system according to the creators of this type of weapon the russians after another day of operational pause renewed their bombings of bilagorovka without any changes on the ground the south in kupinsk area no changes central no changes north in kupinsk we have additional updates additional russian progress and this is also a very important thing about the topic for example on this video we can see how the russian tank uh, was uh, attacking the edge positions of the Ukrainians in Katlarovka. And just yesterday, or maybe the day before yesterday, we received the first update that the Russians entered Katlarovka. And two days later, so today or one day later, we got the first geolocations confirming this. When talking about the Chiretina, the Russians entered, according to the rumors on the ground, almost a week ago inside of Arkhangelska, but yet we haven't received even a single confirmation of that. So this is the main problem that uh, should be, of course, uh, resolved during the next few days on this video we can see another storm by the russians of the ukrainian positions in the central kislovka so it's like the edge positions of the western part so the russians are pushing and of course the russians will establish control over these two villages because the ukrainians show almost no resistance they understand most likely that they have no chances to slow down the russians from the other side, we see the continuous concentration of the armored forces of Ukraine on, along the borderlands. The Ukrainians try to concentrate everything they have, armored vehicles, tanks, air defense systems, so everything. They're building a very powerful defense belt. Of course, the Russians see everything. Uh, today, the Russians discovered another IRST air defense position. And as a result of two Iskander strikes, that position was destroyed. Furthermore, we have another INTPQ radar destroyed by the Russians, a counter-artillery dual radar, also as a result of strike. And we have additional videos of how the Russians were lancetic and droning the Ukrainian convoys. So we discussed that during the previous few days, we received significant number of videos of strikes against on Ukrainian convoys, which confirms that they're moving and moving and moving forces on the border with Kharkiv, because most likely this obviously is going to be the Russian area of Russian offensive. So we'll see, we'll see, because we got a lot of updates, including that Ukrainians confirms that most likely the Russians are going to attack and it's going to be a very difficult period of time. Uh, also, we discussed that Ukrainians during the same period of time are going to uh, most likely try to open Kherson front line. So just buy as many as possible popcorn for the next few months. Uh, when talking about political events, um, no changes, almost nothing. Kiev is signing agreements, uh, security agreements with the United Kingdom, with the United States of America. Uh, with the Kyiv is asking for additional 
for additional uh, Patriot systems. Uh, some uh, authorities of Kiev reported that the Russians have already concentrated around 35,000 along a long border with Kharkiv, but the Russians are planning to increase this number uh, till 70,000, and with the number of 70,000, the Russians will try to break through the defense belt and to probably encircle Kharkiv, but because with 70,000, very unlikely the Russians are able to capture the town with a million population. Uh, furthermore, we got the statement of the Minister of Defense of Russian Federation who reported that during the 2024 Ukrainian since the beginning of the year have already lost 111,000 soldiers. Of course significant losses and most likely their loss are going to just rise the numbers and uh, this maybe year we're gonna let's say bypass or reach about a million and that's it for today military summary channel reminds to condemn any violence in the world thank you for your watching subscribe to my channel put your likes to my patreon have a good day bye bye